Okay, now we're recording. Please go ahead. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Thursday, October 24th um, Charter Review Committee meeting, which is being held on Zoom. Um, we are going to start the meeting, so I'll go through folks and say if you can hear me and be heard. Um, I'll start with Meg, as I see it on my Zoom screen. I hear you, and I think I can be heard. Excellent. <laughs> Bernie. Yes. Uh, yes, I'm here. Great. Erica. Here. Excellent. Andy. Uh, here. Excellent. Um, Dan. I'm here. Dan. I'm Excellent. here. Great. <laughs> uh, Ken. I'm here and I'm on a very loud bus at the moment. It won't be the case for the whole meeting, but I hope you can hear me. Sounds good. We can hear you loud and clear. Um, and I don't hear much background noise in there, so that's good. Uh, Marcus? Yeah, I'm here. Excellent. Um, and did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Uh, okay, perfect. Um, Raphael is not here currently, um, so we will start the meeting without him, but if he joins, I'll make sure that he can hear us and be heard. Um, so now let's start the meeting with uh, approval of minutes. Meg, you wrote the minutes, um, and I believe you had a question about the minutes, if you want to go ahead. Well, um, I I did, I had some problems, uh, it, partially because I didn't plan, uh, remember when I signed up that I had was be out of town nine days between the last meeting and this one, but also I didn't possibly because Athena wasn't there, I didn't get the guidance over so the minutes that I did had some problems, for example. So everyone who does the minutes, I suggest that you really note when a meeting is held remotely, there are additional requirements of the minutes. So for example, it's not adequate to say the vote was unanimous, even though above you've listed everyone who's there, you have to list at that point and you have to list who, who who the motion was made by and who seconded it. So a couple of times there was no second, but I encourage in the future, the chair to say the motion was made by so-and-so and it was seconded by so-and-so because sometimes it was hard to hear. And the other little problem was that the minutes were amended, but it was a Scrivener's change that wasn't described. So I couldn't put that in what it technically was. And I can't remember quite how I handled it. Uh, but also I listed the people who were in attendance, which, we just heard you're not supposed to do. So I think I have to redo that part or you could amend them to take that out. But we only got them this afternoon because of communication problems with my further complicated by my computer problems or and my uh, the document not being openable. Uh, but, so, but you can read, they just came a, a couple of hours ago uh, so I don't see how you can, I, I need to do make those adjustments that I just heard about a few minutes ago that before the meeting started that we shouldn't name the people who were in attendance, which I did. Anyway, I apologize. I really tried. No problem. <laughs> anyway. Um, so it's up to the committee if they'd like to um, approve the minutes or make amendments or just save them for the next meeting. Um, I had the the time last time to to take a look at them before I added them to the committee packet and was able to make edits and share those with um, Andy oh, and took the minutes beforehand. So if you'd like me to do that, oh. then we can just bump them to the next agenda or you can approve them, make amendments and approve them, whatever you want to do. But um, I apologize that I wasn't able to review them before I added them to the packet this time. And, um, and I'll share the guidance and the template that I shared with you and Andy with the rest of the committee members. So everyone is able to use that as a jumping off point. And then um, if anybody doesn't have Word, um, I can make the template uh, available online so that you can edit a document in Word online. Um, yeah, I'm, it's definitely the problem of not having Word. I've got a, I have a brand new computer and it doesn't have Word yet. So that was yeah. further, further complicated everything. Yeah, I don't want that to anyway. be a barrier. So I can work with, uh, with all of okay. you to make sure that you can do that. And for some Excellent. reason, when you add a PDF, it can't be amended. So that was, I sent a PDF, but then it was set. But anyway, the, enough of that. <laughs> have, edits, have the edits been made? If so, I feel like we should just approve them. 
I haven't taken out. No, Athena just said she hasn't read okay. the latest version and it included the uh, names okay. of the three attendees. <laughs> I'm happy to just say we amended then, that way, but I don't think people have had a chance to read it because it just you just got it. Yeah, I haven't had a chance <laughs> to read it yet. So let's let's postpone it. Um, <laughs> I apologize. That's my perspective. I'll make a motion in a minute. Bernie? No, I was just going to suggest that we, we put it off till next okay. week, but not to let this... Not till I have a bad habit of letting the minutes get too far ahead of, of uh, or too far behind in any committee behind. I've been on. Yeah, yeah, I, behind. I agree. So, so I, um, I'd like to, you know, um, reform that habit. <laughs> I agree. Okay. I, right. I, I agree strongly. That's why I, I tried several back. Yeah, I, I think it's really important to approve them. Mm -hmm. There's no point in the, the, the primary reason to have them is in order to be sure that you have an accurate record. And you know the, mm -hmm. the saying about if you want to have power in a group, you you create the agenda and write the minutes. And so it's important to look at them and make sure they reflect everyone's opinion and not just the person who took them. Okay, excellent. Um, so I move to uh, postpone the minutes. We, we can do so, that informally. You could just yeah, okay. yeah, excellent, good. great. Um, so we'll postpone the minutes till next meeting. Uh, <laughs> Athena, you're taking minutes for this meeting. Is that correct? Yes, I'll cover you for this meeting. Thank you very much. Um, perfect. So let's put the agenda back up. Um, I'm for folks. Blur my back. And uh, just a reminder, um, now that we're officially sort of beginning, uh, for comments and stuff, raise your hand, um, preferably on Zoom, simply because the way the Zoom screen, it won't let me see everybody at the same time. Um. So that's that. And next is public comment. Um, there are currently three partic or four attendees. Um, would anybody like to make a public comment? And you'll have three minutes and we'll bring you into Zoom. It will tell you to unmute yourself um, and join us and you'll be allowed to give a public comment. So please raise your hand um, on Zoom if you would like to give a public comment at this time. <laughs> You seen anyone, Athena? No okay. hands, no hands in the audience. Excellent. So we will close the public comment period with no public comments. Um, and I'll actually pass it to you next, Athena, for a quick open meeting law review. Oh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna um take the screen down so I can see everybody a little right. bit better. I'll make this just a very brief overview. And then if there are questions, I think um things get a lot trickier in figuring out these things in practice than what is shared in the open meeting log guide. So one thing that I wanted to say right up front is um, we work with this all the time. There are questions that come up about this all the time, even among members who've been serving on boards and committees for many, many years. So um, what I hope you take away from this brief discussion is that um, the door is always open for you to ask questions. You can ask me questions about the open meeting law. You can ask the town clerk questions about the open meeting law. Um, she often kicks those over to me because I have, <laughs> I've been working with boards and committees uh, a little bit more. And um, the attorney general's office also gives advice. Um, and so I don't expect anyone to come away from this conversation being an expert and knowing what to do in every situation. Um, I encourage the chair and members to feel empowered to ask for a brief recess, um, to ask, seek clarification on a matter or ask questions during a meeting um, because things come up that aren't explicitly <laughs> stated in the open meeting law guide or in the rules. And uh, so we should give each other a little bit of grace in figuring those things out as we go. Um, so the, the purpose of the open meeting law is to ensure transparency in the, the democratic process because it depends on the public having knowledge about the considerations underlying governmental action. So, uh, and, it, and it tries to balance the public interest in that way with the need for us to be able to manage our meetings effectively. Um, so I know I hear from folks quite a bit that it feels like a constraint and it's not intended to to get in the way of things moving along, um, but to make those things as transparent and open to the public as we can. Um, so uh, briefly, meetings um, are, the definition of a meeting is any deliberation on a matter within the purview of the committee among a quorum of the members. So if you decide to email 
five, four other members, um, now you have a quorum. And if you share your thoughts, feelings, and opinions about a matter within the committee, then you have deliberated on a matter. You've actually had a meeting that was not properly posted. So that's a violation. So the definition of a meeting is communications among a quorum about matters within the purview of the body. Um, so like I said, that includes emails, phone calls, um, any deliberation needs to take place at a posted meeting. Um, and the open meeting law also defines deliberation in a serial manner. So if you have a conversation with one member and then you share that conversation with another member, and then one of you shares that conversation with another member, if you reach five, then you've had a deliberation. You've basically held a meeting outside of a public forum, which is not allowed. Um, our charter right now includes a provision that requires a period of public comment at every regular meeting. Um, so that's uh, something that our local law goes over and above the open meeting law. The open meeting law doesn't really address public comment. It addresses public uh, participation and access to meetings, but not public comment. So that provision of the charter is, is over and above. Um, the public also has a right to know what to expect the committee will discuss at an open meeting. So that's why the agenda needs to be specific enough that members of the public have an idea of what you'll discuss um, and so that they can gauge their interest and participation at a meeting. Um, and that's why we had had a conversation earlier about um, adding items to the agenda if they're not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Um, the best way to do that is to ask that the chair add an item to the next meeting agenda unless it's an emergency. So unless we have to take something up at this meeting, the best thing to do if there's something you want to talk about is, is ask the chair to put it on the next meeting agenda. Uh, I'll pause here for a moment. Dan, you have a question? Yeah, so I, I guess I ask you to repeat. So a, deliber a, a meeting is anything where there's deliberation about the matter at hand, that the, the, the business of the committee. Among a quorum. That, right, in a, in a quorum. And so what is the category of talking about the goings-on at the committee? I run into a committee member and I say, what do you think of how things are going? That's not the subject of the committee, but it's the workings of the committee. What right, that's somebody's thoughts, feelings, and opinions about what the committee is doing. So that would be deliberation, but you haven't reached a quorum yet. So say you yeah. bump into Erica at Big Y and you talk about how the committee's going and I really think the committee should be focusing on this or that. And then one of you talks to another person and shares that. And maybe the other one of you talks to another person and shares that. And yeah, so yeah. so uh, we can it, it becomes a slippery slope. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. specifically, like I put the, the issue, our relationship with the town council that's on the agenda mm -hmm. and it isn't. So this is about, uh, and you could say administration, like what do you think of how Athena is, is running the meetings? That's not what I'm, <laughs> but just as an example. So it's not the subject of that committee's work. Do you want to use the distinction I'm making? Um, you're, you're referring to the purview. The, of the committee yeah, is that is that what you're looking to clarify? Yeah, I mean, of so so there's okay. We're here to look at the charter. That's our the business. I mean, if we got together in a quorum and talked about uh, the Red Sox, there's no there's right. No yeah, talk about there. the weather all day. So so is <laughs> is discussing the the mechanisms of the of the committee. In other words, I'm I'm like you said, frustration about open meeting law is talking about that. That isn't actually the the business of the that that's not the subject the committee is there to to deal with but it is about the workings of the committee that, that seems like those are different things is that question making sense dan i'm so appreciative of your attention to the nuance of these things i know <laughs> that you're you're trying to get things right and i appreciate that so deeply um because it is complicated and sometimes you know a conversation might begin in a way that you have no intention of talking about committee business and then you start to get into committee business and and uh so you know it's up to each committee member to uphold the open meeting law if there were a complaint against the committee that there was a breach of the open meeting law then it would be up to members to uh confirm that they did not break the law so it's on each of you to be able to say we didn't break the law or we did and we need to do something to um resolve that breach 
Um, and so my advice is always going to be, if you think it might be within the purview of the committee, don't talk about it with a quorum of members outside a committee. Um, if it if it isn't something that's vital, if you want to complain about the open meeting law to a, a fellow committee member, then I would say that's that's just fine. You can mm -hmm. go ahead and do that. Um, but if you start to talk about, you know, I I really wish we had talked yeah. about this at a meeting, and Athena said that we couldn't add it to the agenda because it was after forty eight hours, and you know, you see how things can get. So, and we all like to talk and that's perfectly natural. Um, so just, you know, keep that in mind. And you wanna be able to say if there were a complaint that you didn't break the law and you wanna be able to say that truthfully. And you also wanna keep in mind that um, the public has a right to know, you know, your thoughts, feelings, and opinions about what you're doing. Um, like I shared with Dan and Erica previously, um, what you are undertaking is a, is a historic effort um, this being the first charter review the town has ever conducted, and your thoughts, appealing your thoughts, opinions, and feelings about what you're doing is really an important part of the historic record of this process because it puts everything that you're doing into the context of the time. And so, folks in the future, long after we're all gone, might go back and wonder how you reached the conclusion that you did about some decision that you made. Um, and we want to be able to show, have a record of how those decisions were made and the deliberations that were involved in those decisions. So in that way, we really want to keep things on the record for the historical nature of what you're doing. Meg? Um, at the last meeting, we talked about when you were here about uh, subcommittees that are officially appointed by the committee compared with working groups, both mm. of which would be a not a, a uh, quorum. So if those met and didn't share any information until it was reported to the whole group would those be that those would not violate the open meeting law um the open meeting law doesn't make a distinction between a subcommittee or something else that you call a subcommittee that's not sub subcommittee so you can call it a working group you can call it a sub conference you can call it whatever you want but if the if the Charter Review Committee has designated members to do some work on the committee's behalf, then you have essentially created a subcommittee, regardless of what you call it. So you can call it but a working regardless, group. But regardless you, of whether it's a quorum. If the committee has designated more than one member to do work on its behalf, then it is a subcommittee. So it doesn't have to be a quorum to be a subcommittee. Usually subcommittees are less than a quorum. So if you designate two members or three members or six members to do some work on behalf of the committee, then you have essentially created a subcommittee to do work on the committee's behalf. And that subcommittee would be subject to the open meeting law. They would need to post their meetings. They would need to take minutes. They would have to conduct their business <clears throat> in, a, in an open way. And Julian has added that to um, an item later in the agenda so we can talk more specifically about that later um but, but the name our, doesn't matter in our last meeting we talked about informal ways of gathering information from the public like two people meeting with two other people in a over coffee to have a conversation if they haven't been as uh we're trying to create more informal ways of having conversations with people to get a variety of different kinds of input and from mm -hmm. unlikely people who don't necessarily want to go and speak, you know, in a big public meeting. Yeah. That would be. It it depends. Um, it depends whether the, the Charter Review Committee has authorized specific members to do work on its behalf. If the committee is saying um, that we want Julian and Andy and Dan to go and meet with residents at the coffee shop in North Amherst and gather feedback there, on its behalf and then report back to the committee on what information you've gathered, that's a subcommittee and you need to post that meeting and you need to take minutes. Wow. Hi, Andy. Go ahead, Andy. I'm just I I um we're gonna have to be going and conducting research basically. So interviewing people. Every time we interview people, it's a public meeting. If the committee has authorized more than one person to speak oh. with members of the public on its behalf, uh, then we need to we need to follow the open meeting law. So, so if one meeting. member goes out and talks to people and go, well, I you know talk to my neighbors and I talk to folks at Black Sheep and so on, um, 
that's perfectly fine. If one person is doing it, the committee can designate one person to do it. Um, but when the committee designates more than one person to go out and do work on its behalf, um, then we treat that as a subcommittee. That feels extraordinarily cumbersome. I mean, if we wanted to have two people, so one person could take notes and one person could interview, um, you know, yeah, <laughs> it just seems like it's really limiting. Every every time we interview a council member and have two people, or if we go to you know have to the boulders and have a two people talking, it's a public meeting and we have to post it and keep minutes. That seems crazy. It it depends. So we can get into ways that we can achieve doing what the committee wants to do and gathering public input in different contexts in a way that. Uh, is respectful of the open meeting law. And so in some of those instances, you're just there to collect information. You're not having a deliberation. So you could call it an, you know, an information session or something, but as long as the committee members aren't out there talking about their own thoughts and opinions and feelings, it's, it's a matter of how we present that information, how we distribute that information, what kind of notes we collect and so forth. So I, I get that it can feel constraining, um, there are usually ways of achieving what you're trying to do with respect to the open meeting law um, and to do that in the most transparent way possible. And we'll we'll figure it out. It'd be good to have some in guidance on what those ways are. <laughs> well, I, and, and I'm not gonna answer every question right in this moment um, because uh -huh. as we figure out what kind of um, public input you want where you want to gather that and how if you want to invite people to the meetings if you want to go out and and do um surveys or whatever then we're gonna we'll figure it out as we go i'm not going to be able to answer every question okay right now but i'll answer bernie and andy's questions well the deliberation piece is is, is key you've got a couple of committee members who are holding a um coffee hour at the black sheep to hear from people, um, that's fine. You can do that. Um, but you can't talk between yourselves and say, well, what if we went back to the committee with this or, you know, this really relates to that or it, it, it makes it a little bit difficult because you, you have to remember that um, you're communicating and mostly listening, which is difficult for some of us, including me, um, <laughs> with, um, with the person and not with each other. So that's that's a that's a fine line, and you know if you have, you know, you put up an announcement somewhere that we're going to have a coffee hour at such and such a place, and uh, to uh, hear from the public about the council's behavior or the council's this rule of the council, that's okay. You're you're not you know you're not being sneaky. You're not breaking the up and meeting law. In my humble opinion, uh, having lived with this for too long. Um, the other thing that to, to maybe unnecessarily complicate matters is is that you're, you you can you have ministerial duties that you can discuss. So if you go to two other members and say, "Hey, you know, I really don't like to meet on Thursday at six o'clock. Could, could you think oh. we could push it back to seven? That's yeah. ministerial, <laughs> yeah. and that's okay. Uh, even though the committee will eventually get together to debate whether or not to change the hours and place and time of meeting and all that stuff." Yeah, so, House, but you have housekeeping to, we can do outside. Housekeeping is, but you really have to be aware of when you're into something, having a discussion about something that's substantive and before the committee. And you can make it work. Uh, I'd love to see the legislature have to do this, but. Me don't. too. <laughs> Andy. Um, yeah, I, I was just going to come back and say that that distinction between information gathering and deliberation clarified it for me. Um, so if that, because I think we'll be doing both of those things, but if we can keep them separate and make clear when we're doing the information gathering, then that frees us to do the work that we need to do. So, And we just want to be really clear about what the committee is doing and how, and that if there is a co coffee hour or something that we don't get a whole bunch of you together to and you start talking about stuff <laughs> oh, <laughs> or right, you know yeah, you're right. having a conversation about, with somebody at black sheep and it turns into a whole debate among a quorum so um as long as i think we're you know as transparent as possible about what you're doing and what the purpose of those meetings or uh information mm -hmm. sharing and and perspective gathering you're doing that i think we're in the clear dan yeah i i, I mean i think 
really what I'm you said, but I'm ho was hoping to hear, which is there, there, if there's a way of making it work, we'll make it work. It isn't that I mean, there's been ways in which it feels like this is an obstacle and it's um, it's frustrating, but uh, it, it does seem it's like, OK, so that's a that's a subcommittee. But if it's one person who's been who's doing this task and someone else is going to help them, then it's not so. You know, and, and it, it isn't bending the law to do this. It's just to say, hey, let's respect the law and, and keep moving forward. And if and if there's a way of looking at it that doesn't create an obstacle, I, it's my hope we would look at it that way and not be impeded. Okay, I'm going to touch on a couple other things and then take questions and hopefully um, if there are other questions after that that come up, because like I said earlier, those things arise as we move through this process, that's that's to be expected and, um, and I'm happy to help whenever those questions come up. Um, so uh, we talked about adding items to the agenda, we can do that at a meeting. Um, there's, I think, rarely gonna be an instance where this committee is gonna have something urgent that it needs to talk about that has come up within 48 hours of the meeting notice. So um, for the most part, we put everything that the committee plans to discuss on the agenda, and then you only discuss those things. Um, the minutes, like Meg mentioned, uh, there are specific things the minutes need to include, who was present, what actions were taken, uh, the dis a summary of the, dis the discussion sufficient enough that a person who did not attend the meeting underst understands what happened. Um, and then, like Meg mentioned, there are some other requirements when we have virtual meetings, including um, that the chair is confirmed that folks can hear and be heard, that all votes are taken by roll call, um, that the chair has announced that the meeting's being recorded. Um, and uh, if there were connectivity issues when someone joined or left. Um, and that, that remote meeting provision is, um, there's currently an exemption in place that allows public bodies to meet with a quorum uh, being fully remote um, that expires next year um, unless the legislature takes action again. So this exemption came up during the pandemic and they the legislature has extended it a couple times. Um, if that ex exemption expires, uh, then we'll have to move back to in-person meetings. We'll have to have at least a quorum of members in person. Hopefully we don't have to deal with that because um, in my opinion, the virtual meetings have increased participation and have made it a lot easier for people with busy lives to um, participate in these kinds of meetings. And uh, we'll cross that bridge if and when we come to it. Meg. Um, in our last meeting, uh, so I didn't see in the guidance about the minutes not mentioning specific names at the last meeting, Eric had asked a good question, which was why people weren't identified for what they said. And I hadn't seen that. So I identified everybody by what they said in the minutes I did. You can tell me later, or, but maybe everyone should know whether that description of what the discussion was about and what was said should or should not identify who said what. So if it, it shouldn't identify. I need to do a lot of more editing than I thought. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it's not that it should or shouldn't identify. It's the minutes are not a transcript of the meeting, so you don't need to capture every single comment that was made. Um, from the advice that I give when I'm training the minute takers for the council and council committees is that if there is a, a general discussion, sometimes bullet points are really helpful because you can just, you know, take down the the notes in the notes, you know, who, you know, the points that were made and Maybe there wasn't a decision reached, it was just a discussion. And so discussion points are sufficient. If on the other hand, the committee is, um, there are opposing views, then it's helpful to have the context of what the two or multiple sides of the view are before a vote was taken to kind of put the vote in context. If there's a split vote on something and no explanation why members voted one way or another, that, that's a little bit confusing and somebody who didn't attend the meeting right. might not understand what happened. So you don't have to say who made each and every comment, um, but you wanna make the, the, the details sufficient enough for someone who didn't attend to understand what happened and how the decisions were made. So at the meeting, the tension, not tension very much, because we see was between whether, you know, what's the, never mind. let's keep going, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Andy. 
Uh, it's the same. I, I had the same question because you know I, I looked at the. Oh, you muted. I looked at the um, minutes for the council, and and I saw that they didn't identify who said what. That it was basically just bullet points of various ideas in the discussion, and Erica uh, naturally or very rightly asked why we didn't why I didn't identify them that way, and so. Um, I think it's easier to do it without identifying people, but it's maybe, I don't know when it becomes a transcript and when it becomes, you know, a, a list of ideas. And so I, I guess it, it just seems like something we should decide what, which way we want to do it. Maybe. I, I don't know. I mean, it, otherwise it'll, it could be different each time. It will be a little different each time because they're going to be written by different people. And so, you know, there's, yeah, there's going to be matter. nine different ways. So I don't think you need to make sure that they're, they're written with the same voice because it won't be the same voice. Right. Um, so I, I tried to just put them in, you know, just in, include all the ideas, but I didn't put names in. And I, I don't know if that's. I think that's perfectly sufficient in that context because it was just a discussion. There wasn't a contentious vote or anything. Um, if it feels important to you to, you know, that there were folks that felt one way and folks that felt another way, then that's something that, um, that you'd want to include in the minutes, like who felt which so, way. So I thought, Sorry, at the last discussion, there wasn't tension exactly, but there was a different weight of people who wanted to stick to the strict, what the charter charge is about and others who wanted to include, while it's not in our charge, if a significant number of people made a comment to at least report it or take it into consideration. So it, was, it wasn't a big tension, but there were differences of opinion about that. Tension was too strong a word. Yeah. Are there any other questions before I hand things back to Julian? All right, Julian, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you all for, for your thoughtful attention. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you, Athena. I appreciate it. That was certainly <laughs> very in-depth and even taught me many things that I did not know. Um, so I appreciate it. Uh, anyway, back to the agenda. Um, our next point is uh, questions for legal counsel and legal review. So uh, do you want to, this was tabled from the last meeting when you weren't here, Athena. So basically, how do people want to compile a list of questions? Do we want to have KP Law come um, and uh, speak with us directly? Um, have them prepare a memo? What, what exactly do we want to do? Do we want to just have it sort of on call as we need it? How do we want to approach it? Athena, go right ahead. Thank you. Um, so our attorney who who uh, this, this work falls within her scope um, has said that she can come and present to the committee um, an overview. Um, if you feel that that would be helpful, we can schedule that for a future meeting. Um, if you feel that collecting more specific questions from members and then asking for written responses or for her to come to a meeting and address those questions. And, and then there could be an, an opportunity for follow-up questions, then that would be fine. An ongoing back and forth of written opinions is costly. And so I'll discourage the committee from doing that just due to the cost of um, repeated written opinions. Um, it's it's uh, easier for us to have her come and speak with the committee. And then if there are groups of questions that we can collect once the committee gets into its work and has specific legal questions, um, then we can do that a few times if needed, but an ongoing back and forth with legal questions, um, I would not advise. Excellent, thank you. Bernie? Yeah, I'm gonna suggest that we kind of follow the, uh, the, the, the process that we did when we did the, the, the review of the town's bylaws. Um, in that committee who was chaired by Bob Ritchie, I told Bob that I invoked his name at one of these meetings as, as an authority. And when he stopped laughing, he told me I did that at my own risk. So, um, but what we did in was that we compiled a list of questions. Uh, as things came up, um, one of us would say, you know, I really think we need to have KB Law look at this. That would get listed down. And then what we would do is when we 
built the list up a bit or, or got to a point where we couldn't move forward without answers, uh, we would submit that to the attorney and have her review them and respond back to us in writing. Um, one of the way, one of the, the reasons you're doing that is, is that, you know, sometimes you end up answering your own question as you go along. Uh, the other thing is um, uh, lawyers are expensive. <laughs> and, you, you, you know, you can't get on the phone with your lawyer and say, hey, how about, well, you know, what do you think of the Dodgers versus the Yankees? You know, how come the Red Sox didn't make it this year? Because the clock's running. Uh, so if you compile the, you compile the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, questions as best you can, submit them to counsel and write, you're going to have counsel respond back in writing, you're, you give a more economical um, process. The other thing we did is, and I would suggest that this happened with this committee's final report, is the draft of this committee's final report gets reviewed by counsel. Um, so she can then flag anything that we may have um, miss made any missteps we may have made or uh, or 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 any kind of comments. So it's it's iterative. You 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 build a list. You get to the list where you you really feel like you need to move on. You submit that to counsel, get a response, build another list, get a response, and then counsel looks at the final final report. If folks would like to have uh, one of our you know member of KB KB Law is a pretty good sized firm. Um, you know, like have a KP law member here to, to walk people through the, you know, what council does that, that would be helpful probably, um, uh, you, you know, so folks should be open to that, um, recommendation. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Erica. Thank you. Um, I am all for the idea of compiling questions for uh, legal counsel before we actually have someone present with us but it raises a like a hypothetical question for me about work process and the the conversation we were just having about open meeting and it just it just as a hypothetical could ask my question and see if see if I'm off base um if we wanted to do the work to compile a good list of questions that we all have perhaps in our minds uh for a legal counsel um Given the the potential for the conflict with open meeting, if we if we were to meet outside of this time, um, and we wanted to just kind of keep a running list of questions somewhere that we then kind of bring to meeting, discuss, agree on, and then present to council. That running list, given that we work a lot of our work is virtual, keeping a running list somewhere, maybe in the document center or something, that we can each contribute and add to outside of meeting time? Is that in any way a violation of any, like creating a work product outside of meeting time? It is, because it's not exactly public. We're, we're, we're contributing, let's say, questions or thoughts or opinions outside of the prescribed meeting time. Athena? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, so, uh, you can definitely compile a list of questions outside of meeting. You can say, uh, Bernie is going to compile the list of questions. Everybody send your questions to Bernie. He's going to maybe put like questions together and uh, combine questions that are kind of in the same vein in a way that makes sense. And then we'll see them at the next meeting. That's perfectly acceptable. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's very helpful. That's I was trying to imagine how we could um how we could do that work without making it that process itself one agenda item for an almost entire meeting absolutely yeah so we could do that outside of meeting we can say one member is going to compile the questions and we'll see it at the next meeting if that seems like the sufficient list then we'll we'll send that off so um bef before um so it sounds like the members are not interested in a presentation about the scope of the committee and the different methods of making changes to the charter. Is that correct? Or is that something that the committee would like in terms of framing? Uh, I'll go to Dan, then Andy, and then Eric again. Yeah, I, th I mean, two things. One is I, my recollection is where we came to is this basic idea of um, 
that we're not going to be constrained by the type of action that would require. That seemed to be the legal question we faced. And I felt like this was my understanding. We had kind of um, we had resolved that. Charter Commission, Special Act, Council vote. What we're about is getting the feedback. And then if it's necessary to, to correctly characterize things, um, that would be the point, at least about that, that, that we could that we'd get counsel. The other point, I mean, re related to this idea of gathering um, questions, I was just thinking about like what Eric and I had, uh, were going to do and, and things that got in our way is really just generate ideas. So, so uh, the, another way of think about this, okay, we're brainstorming. Well, you know, the open meeting law says you can't put your opinion in, in say in the, in the packet, you can put information. I mean, if you think about, well, what are the ways that you can engage with people? Okay, let's say face-to-face -face interviews. Is that an opinion or is that just a reality that everyone knows there's set ways to, to gather information for, for people? It seemed like instead of this, two people do that, could we actually just say, okay, everyone put in the packet uh, ways you can think of that we could reach out to people. We'll have a list of things that are just like a list of questions. We'll have a list of things and then that'll be on the packet. It's open. Anyone can see it. And that's what we'll discuss. I just say, you know, again, in pushing this idea of what can you gather without a formal, um, outside of a, of a formal meeting, is that another thing that would be in that category? So I guess that's a question for Athena. Julian, may I respond? Yeah, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Uh, so there's, there's a balance between making sure the committee is following the, the letter and spirit of the law, and then just making it easy for the chair to manage a meeting and for committee members to engage in a meeting. So um, what you're suggesting sounds like nine different people writing a document with all their opinions about uh, public input and participation, and then all nine of you have to read eight other documents, that becomes a little unwieldy in terms of meeting management. Um, if they're posted, then you know, you're know you following the letter of the law, but it's an unwieldy process. So in that way, it to me, it makes more sense for one member to gather that information and compile it. And then that is what's shared before the next meeting. So um, while your suggestion that everyone send their ideas and we post those in the packet meets the letter of the law, it's an unwieldy process to have multiple versions of something that all nine of you have to read before a meeting. It's just much. So, um, yeah, I mean, the question really was more about the, not wedded to that specific thing. If it's one person gathering it, in other words, it's not deliberation to just to bring ideas together. And, and I mean, that's really my to bring questions together to say, here's a, you know, he, sure, I'll collect everyone. Just send me your things and I'll, I'll, I'll put this all together and then we'll have our, our subject. Right. I mean, you know, again, as a way of, uh, again, of moving things forward. Yeah. So but, everyone could send you their their brainstorm ideas about yeah. um, public input and then you compile them. The the what we don't want to get into is then you sharing that document with the committee and then the committee having feedback right. on that all outside yeah. of a meeting. So we, we collect yeah. and compile and then share at the next meeting and, and in the packet and that's fine. Okay, good. Excellent, thank you. Um, Erica, or I said, did I say Andy and then Erica? Yeah, Andy, go ahead. Yeah, I guess um, I was trying to think of what we, we made some sort of a distinction between what what the legal support would be versus consultant support. And, and the, the legal was more about like, what does the law say about what our charge is and what what kinds of changes would require what types of um, action. And then, um, you know, a consultant might be more like, well, here, here's how other places have done it or here's, you know, whatever. So I guess, we had talked about having about collecting things more broadly than just what can be done locally, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm clear exactly, even though I've, you know, I've read the law and, but I'm not sure exactly if we are, it would be helpful, I think, to, to know 
what you know as we're as we're collecting ideas to know which ones are actionable locally and which ones are are require more heroic measures and so if that's something that kp law could tell us easily at the outset i would enjoy hearing that okay um erica thank you i wanted to just so basically second that which is to propose that I think that some initial framing um, uh, about the the legal the legal questions that sort of undergird this process would be helpful. I would just propose that we do it after we've given self, given ourselves just a little bit of a running start on the content of of what we're yes. charged with. In other words, it, perhaps not the next meeting um, because we're just sort of getting our procedures in order but maybe not two months out because we, we want to have we want to have the legal framework in mind as we go about our work so I think but having an initial it's my opinion that having an initial framing from um, the people who know the legal framework that we want to dig into uh, would be helpful in the near future all righty thank you um Bernie? Yeah, I'm, uh, thank you, um, Erica and Andy. Those are, are you know, those are great points. And, and it, um, I, <laughs> I also think there's another audience here that may benefit from um, an appearance by counsel and um, or the town attorney. Uh, uh, and, and to give, not only to give us an understanding of, of where the guardrails are on this and, you, you know, where, where, where things may and may or may not head, um, that's one that's very important for us to have a shared understanding of what the mission is. But the other thing is, is that we have a public and we have a uh, we have a town council, uh, none of whom have ever done this. Um, most of whom probably didn't even realize this was in the charter. So um, giving uh, a town a town attorney a chance to give us an overview and an explanation of what the process is and what. Um, is, is something that then can be archived so people can go back to it and look at it uh, if they come new to the process and wonder, or uh, for those of us who um, are like myself, who are aged and uh, may have memory issues, you can go back and, uh, <laughs> and, and <laughs> review it. Um, so so I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with uh, Erica and Andy, and I, I would very much uh, like to have uh, counsel here uh, uh, to meet with us. Okay, Dan. I really um, second your point, Bernie. I think that that public ac um, education engagement part is, uh, I agree with you, that's really important. Because um, it is, I mean, this is stuff most people, unless you dig into it, you know, just don't, you know, don't, don't even know it's there. You don't know what the content is. So that's, I, I think that's good. Ken? But I just happen to agree with what um, what, uh, what Bernie most succinctly put. Excellent. Um, all righty. Any other questions or comments? <laughs> what I'm hearing is generally, uh, yeah, go ahead, Athena. Yep. I, I was just going to ask um, if there was consensus on um, that the committee would begin to collect questions. It sounds like we don't have a person yet who will be doing the collecting and compiling. Um, and that uh, a presentation about the framing would be helpful, but not yet. And and then questions would be submitted to council for some feedback later. Is yeah, that the consensus? I, I think that seems like a pretty solid idea of the consensus. Um, Ken, did you sign something? All righty. Uh, Marcus? Sorry, just fighting with the mute button. Yeah, I would agree with that can the summary and uh, agree that there's consensus. Okay, excellent, perfect. So we have consensus. I'll send out an email to everybody. Or no, I can't send out an email. Um, Athena, could you send out an email to everyone at some point <laughs> asking for their questions? Um, and then uh, we can have KP Law come at a later date and discuss with us. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, so moving us along to 
agenda item number six, which is our meeting schedule. Um, so we're currently scheduled to meet uh, once every two weeks and um, and mostly virtual with the option of having some hybrid meetings. Um, and there's one interesting caveat to that, which is that our next scheduled meeting is actively on Halloween. Um, and thanks for pulling that up, that's excellent. Um, and then the reason that that is, is because in November, there's only room, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Athena, for one, uh, for one meeting in November and one meeting in December, um, which would be half of what we normally do on those months. So Wait. I'll leave it. What? Go ahead, Meg. Yep. I'll raise my hand. A mute. Why is it we can only meet once in November and once in there? Why couldn't we meet on different two different Thursdays in November and December? Um, Julian, I can't raise my hand while I'm screen sharing. May okay, I? Go right ahead. Yep, go right ahead. So um, th the dates that I proposed here are just proposed. Um, I wanted to include the option of a third meeting in October um, because there was only one no date in November that was available. So I've the dates that I've listed here are alternating with the council's governance organization and legislation committee, um, which I'm also a liaison to. So I can't be in both of those meetings at the same plate at the same time. They meet 630 to 830 on Thursdays, alternating Thursdays. So these dates alternate with GOL's dates. Um, the November 14 meeting, the other Thursday that's available in November is a holiday. And so that's why there's only that one Thursday in November. Um, and I think I put that in the notes. Here's 1128 is Sorry. Thanksgiving holiday. And then mm -hmm. um, 1226, um, I also omitted because it's the school's winter holiday break. Um, I omitted a meeting on January 2 because that's the last day of Hanukkah. Um, this date I included, um, but it is the last day or the first day of forum. So um, I just wanted to make a note of that in case the committee felt one way or another. Um, and then I've also made notes about Passover, the school's April vacation, Juneteenth, um, and then the 4th of July holiday. Um, so that was my, that was my reasoning um, in picking those dates. And then I, I also wanted to say that I've included these all as virtual meetings, but um, because the committee had asked in the first meeting that I look and see what, what hybrid meetings I could accommodate. And it made more sense to me rather than just picking uh, some random dates that I could serve uh, as hybrid meetings um, would would be to ask the committee to be, uh, you know, think about which meetings would be helpful to have hybrid that I can support and, and do it that way rather than just kind of picking random ones. That was yeah. my logic. Okay, great, thank you. Dan? So, just as a technical thing, is it it's required that that you um, be here for every meeting? Is that a like a is there any wiggle room in that? I mean, this question actually came up because we were talking the other day about um, subcommittee work and that's extra demand on your time. So is that I mean, we can't run our own meeting. Is that uh, like just the, the rules of the town? How much leeway is there in that? Um. That's a good question. So um, right now, the the Zoom is the licensed users of Zoom are some town staff. Um, so if you wanted to hold extra meetings, then a town staff member, and it might not be me, would have to start that meeting, um, <laughs> schedule it and, and post it and then start it. Um, but once somebody begins recording, then they don't necessarily need to stay. That might happen on nights that um, I have something else going on. I might kick your meeting off for you and begin recording and then hop off. Um, so I don't necessarily need to be there, but I'm the staff person assigned. So um, in my Zoom license, I, I can't have two meetings on the same night. And I'm liaison to both this committee and GOL. So I would ask this committee not to schedule meetings at the same time. Meg, go ahead. Is there another evening we could meet? Or was Andy next? Sorry. Is there another, my question was, is there another evening at six that we could meet? I don't see a There's... problem with that. We'd have to think about everyone's schedules and conflicts, but I think that would be great. Um, Andy? 
I was going to ask the same question. I mean, when we met, uh, I guess our first meeting, I just put every other week, I just put us in at six to eight or whatever. And so then I saw this and it's like, that's not the case. So I don't know, um, you know, if, if we could meet every other week and then if we can meet on a Thursday, maybe pick a Wednesday or something. I, I, I don't know how complicated that, I know that's complicated, but. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, Marcus? Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I'm not going to be here next week. I'm driving back from New Jersey for work. But, um, I mean, I can certainly support most evenings, given enough heads up. So. Okay, great. Um, Erica, I saw your hand up, and then it went down. Did you have something to say? Yeah, I wanted to just ask um, if what we initially thought about the every other week and so on given what this looks like when we actually look at dates on calendar if that still seems optimal i'm not suggesting that we that we um you know meet every week or twice a week or something but that we have um uh, maybe we have to think about this a different way if it doesn't seem like the cadence of these meetings is matching what we hope to do yeah. Um, do you still have your hand up, Marcus? Sorry, I forgot to take that. Um, um, Andy? Yeah, um, maybe it, maybe we don't need to schedule so far in advance because as we get into in information gathering, we may be doing, you know, a variety of meeting types that maybe so the during the day or maybe, maybe we, you know, I don't, Maybe it's good for us to keep coming together to deliberate every two weeks, but I, I just, I don't know. I, I guess Erica's question also raised for me, um, do we want to just, you know, figure out what we need to do over the next couple of months and then, yeah. you know, at least a month in advance, we come up with the, you know, the, two, the, the, the following months, you know, schedule. I, I don't know, but at some point, I think it's going to get a little more, we're not just going to be collecting information from people at six o'clock at night. So. Right. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> Julian, if I may, th this could be treated as a, as a bare bones. And then with the understanding that additional meetings could be scheduled at, on other evenings or at other locations or something. Erica. Yeah. To that point, um, Athena or, or others, um, how, well, Athena specifically, how much advance notice uh, would is is proper if we decide we actually you know we need to add another meeting in November um, because we don't want to lose the rhythm. How much advance notice is proper for public announcement and for your scheduling and everything else? Um, so the the meeting notices need to be published forty eight hours in advance, and that the forty eight hours is business days only. So if you have a meeting on Thursday, it needs to be posted by that time on Tuesday. Um, if a meeting's Tuesday, it needs to be posted by that time on Friday um, and so on. So typically, I mean, with the cadence that you have now, there's plenty of time to post meetings in between. But if today you decided that you wanted to meet again next week, there's mm -hmm. time to post that. Um, so uh, un unless you're going to be meeting more more frequently than that, it's easy to add meetings um, in between if if you feel like that's uh, it's needed. Okay. Thank Marcus you. and then Meg. Yeah, this time it's for real. Um, I was going to say I agree with like a bi-weekly cadence. I think we kind of need to keep things moving along. But I also agree with the sentiments that we don't need to start thinking about, you know, how we might impact with July 4th and things like that. So kind of keeping things here and now is good for now. On the understanding, I think that like Athena was saying, like as a bare bones would be roughly every two weeks. Um but firming it up, you know, maybe a month out, maybe two months out or something. Meg, and then I have a comment for myself. Could we could we lower the meeting schedule since we're not talking about it and it's hard to see each other? And I'll just say Thursday is the worst night of the week for me. <laughs> I have two other things that meet on Thursdays. I'm, so I'm just, I'm happy to not show up at those other two things, but I'm just, would be, <laughs> another night would be great. Any night, Saturday. <laughs> Yes, um, I'll give my own comment. 
given that I think everybody else has spoken. Um, I'll just say personally, I ha would have no problem meeting on Saturday nights or another night. However, <laughs> Athena, um, has that was a joke. <laughs> work we, that we want to keep. Um, so that, um, uh, <laughs> the there, my other point is that I think it's important to have some flexibility simply because we're going to be scheduling outreach sessions, listening sessions, et cetera, in the community. So we need to have some flexibility around when exactly our meetings are and what we're doing and all that sort of stuff. Um, I would just say we have to make a decision tonight on this, at least for a certain amount of time, given that I'll just offer my own perspective. I do not want to meet on Halloween. And <laughs> I think that, um, and I think that generally speaking, it would be good to meet a little bit more frequently in November and December if we could find another date that works. Bernie? Yeah, I would think I would would suggest we we take the schedule that before us, lock in those dates just because then we have them fixed, and then we look for other times as as has been suggested. We look for other other days and times when we can meet. I guess uh, I, I guess we we can't meet on the common day of rest still, um, which is Sundays. But other than that, we could meet, in, you know, uh, at any other time. I would not want to meet Monday mm -hmm. nights because I actually feel compelled now to, uh, to to attend some of the council meetings live instead of trying to catch them up on video. Um, what, what if we we take the schedule to try of us and say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna work from this, and then we're gonna we're gonna do a little jazz and you know vary it up as as need, the need arises. The constraints are if we're going to meet by Zoom, the only the constraints are ours in terms of time. Um, we need to and to get a staff person with a Zoom license to to link us up. I mean those are those are the constraints. Um, I, I, you know it's always wonderful to have Athena here, but she doesn't need to be. Um, it, oh, like, it's uh, sad. You, you know. <laughs> So um, you know, so so that's what uh, that that would be my suggestion. Was we we accept the schedule. Um, I was going to have the grandkids come in on Halloween and say hello to the committee, but other uh, because they're the only trick or treaters I get. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, we, I, I can I can certainly meet on I can certainly meet on Halloween, and uh, I can be a little more flexible with my schedule. Um, so. All righty, thank you. Um, Andy? Um, could we see the schedule again? <laughs> and it is perfectly understandable to, if if the committee chooses to adopt the schedule, um, to revisit it and, you know, shift or add or cancel meetings as needed. It's, there's no, um, this isn't set in stone, even if it's adopted. Could we, I'm wondering if we, if we look at this and, and if we actually had every other week a meeting and on weeks where there's a conflict on a Thursday, we try to have a, a Wednesday. Because if we cancel the 31st, then we're not going to meet till the 14th and we'll only meet one and then we won't meet until the 12th. So yeah, that's crazy. That seems yeah, like a lot, a lot, large gap. So is there any way that we could just go back to every other week? And then identify whatever Thursdays don't work for, for, for Athena, you know, and then pick a different night that yeah, week's I'll, week on a, on a two-week schedule. I'll speak for myself. Wednesdays don't work for me, but I could certainly do Friday, Tuesday, et cetera. Um, so I, I totally agree with the gist of that. Um, Dan, and then I'm thinking to make a motion to sort of wrap this up. Yeah, I mean, I think this is what Andy just touched on, and 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 I meant to say earlier, it's not that we don't want you, Athena. Um, no, but if there's, you know, the to, to, you know, I know, I think some people have said, gee, I planned this out from the beginning every two weeks, and I won't be able to make the fourteenth. Um, and so sticking to that and really doing either that the first thing is, is there another administrative person that can do it? And then the last line is, okay, let's find another date. It seems like given the work it took to get the Thursday thing happening, that should be the priority and only change it if there's no one who can start a Zoom meeting. Yeah, 
Uh, just so you know, Dan, your microphone's giving me a fair bit of feedback. I don't know if that's the case for other folks too. Yes. Just so you're aware. I'm going to make the motion that we adopt this meeting schedule um, with the one amendment that we do not meet on October 31st and that we uh, and that we agree to the general premise of aiming to meet every two weeks and uh, and we'll change the schedule as needed to schedule other weekday evenings um, or hybrid meetings when we see fit. Do we need Next. a second? Yes, well, second. I can second that so we can have discussion. And then Excellent. Um, question, does that mean we don't meet again until the 14th of November? That was my I, question. I would, mm, that's a good point. Um, okay, a motion has been made, motion has been seconded, um, and I do agree I would accept a friendly amendment um, because that's a fair stretch of time without meeting. So November, um, if the 30th doesn't work, November 5th is a Tuesday, that's election day. Sorry, Monday the 4th is a council meeting. Tuesday the 5th is election day. Uh, Wednesday the 6th, Julian, you said you weren't available. Um, so the next meeting would be the 7th. I could ask somebody to cover that meeting since I have GOL or Friday the 8th. I would well, accept a friend. Go ahead, Meg. It's I guess we don't want to meet on election day, but we won't know anything between six and eight. And we will have voted. Maybe that's silly. Maybe we're all, all going to be doing our election meditation. But I think the town staff will be busy with the. Oh, yeah. I, right, right. Erica, um, I just say the other thing to consider there is yes. And we also want to give people as much time to vote as possible if their work day ends at five and yeah. our meeting begins at six theoretically um erica uh yeah I, i'm not sure it's a great idea to to plan on election night um if the you know if the republic holds i think that having our um <laughs> meeting on the seventh if we can get an alternate for athena and athena if that all works for you i think that's what i would propose i agree i'll accept a friendly amendment for the second, uh, for the seventh, excuse me. Um, Meg, would you also accept that? Yes. Excellent. Um, so I'll, Andy, go ahead. You're muted. So then that means that we would, the next meeting would be the 14th if we stick to the schedule. So I, I kind of feel like we should go, we, we should go to the schedule, we should revise the schedule to be going every two weeks. So. It would be the 7th, it'd be the 21st, it would be December 5th, it would be, you know, um, you know, like that. The, the, the dates otherwise... were chosen deliberately because they don't coincide with GOL. So the alternating weeks are GOL meeting dates. So yeah. if, if you were to shift to those dates, then I wouldn't be able to attend any of these meetings. Oh, well, I don't want that. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe we... Yeah. Okay. So then, so then maybe we do to do two weeks in a row then, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, any other comments, questions on this? Meg I, has a hand up. Meg, sorry, it didn't come up. Meg, go ahead. Um, so it's muted um, that we're going to meet on the, not on the Halloween, but on the seventh and then again on the 14th and back on the schedule for the time being. I believe so. Yes. So we're all we're the only thing we're voting on is changing October thirty first to November seventh. No, we are voting on that and adopting this schedule. Oh, um, okay. We're adopting the schedule. The motion is to move the October thirty first meeting to November seventh. Um, to adopt this schedule as our meeting schedule, with the understanding that we will meet generally speaking every two weeks and can have hybrid meetings as needed andy okay yeah i'm so, sorry to belabor this but but um that the next meeting after the 14th would then be december 12th so that's a month correct so we so, want to try to add something in between there yeah we might want to 
add that. Um, is there any dates that you can pull up on the calendar that might work for you, Athena? So the 21st is a GOL meeting. You could meet that day. The November 28th is a holiday. And then December 5th is a GOL meeting. If you want to stick to Thursdays, you could do the 21st of November without me or the 5th of December without me. Let's do the 21st of November. Um, Erica? Um. Okay, I was lost in the calendar. I was thinking that if there was an alternative date um, the following week, but I think that means Thanksgiving. That's right. Okay. Um, then I guess oh. the motion is to adopt this meeting schedule as presented currently with uh, the meeting on October 31st canceled, the meeting that meeting moved to November 7th and an additional meeting added on November 21st. Um, Meg, do you want to second that again? Second. Excellent. <laughs> um, what, can we take a vote picture on that of this now? Dan? Um, so the similar issue that came up though. So what's the 14th? Is that, that's three weeks in a row. Should we ditch the 14th? Oh, good point. I think we can have the 14th. I'd rather meet too much than too little, I guess. But that's three meetings. Oh, no. We just went from one meeting in November to three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the question would be, is there <laughs> going to be something substantive to discuss on the 21st? We don't know yet, unless we wanted to schedule that in. Is That would be the... the um, maybe the time that uh, town attorney comes to speak to us and that's the sole topic. Uh, my, my suggestion, if I may, Julian, my suggestion yeah, is, is to leave open the door of adding when it feels that okay. additional meetings would be helpful. Yeah. And, and that will give you the members an idea of when additional meetings will be helpful. So I like I said, you can adopt the schedule and then add and change as you go when it feels that additional meetings would be helpful and and you don't need to figure out the entire calendar this that's a great week. idea okay sounds good um andy and and meetings can be canceled as well i'm sorry for interrupting that's no fine. um do we want to then pull out the 14th and figure we can add it later if we need it decide we need a meeting the next week sure that sounds good to me Sounds good. Okay. Um, so adopting the meeting schedule as presented here with the understanding that we may have hybrid meetings um, from time to time. Uh, any other comments, questions, thoughts? I don't see any. Meg seconded. Um, we'll start voting. I see you first, Andy. Uh, yes. Um, I'm a yes. Uh, Marcus? Yes. Uh, Erica? Yes. Dan? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Ken? Yes. Meg? Yes. Excellent. Um, that is eight in favor, one absent um, for that. So we'll move on to uh our next. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Julian, I will um, take the comments out of this. I will add it to the Charter Review Committee's webpage and share it with members. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, great, great, great. Okay. Next point is number seven, outreach, um, subgroups of interest and topics. So this is, I think we're going to try to schedule and have our outreach discussions with um different communities and see where we want to focus our outreach uh, before we start working on the charter itself. Comments, questions on this? Raise your hand. Sorry, I'm, um, is this relating to the other agenda item number 10? Uh, 
we were setting up to have a conversation about public comment, public outreach. Yeah, if, if that's. Or is um, this a separate item? This is my idea of this item was to have it be we are developing groups that we find important to reach out to, um, whether that be town council, town staff, uh, blank community, blank neighborhood, et cetera. Um, that's what I was thinking of this, but if you and Dan did some research or work on this together and want to report on it, feel free. No, I can speak to that when we get to that agenda. I just wanted to make sure. Excellent. Um, so but, thoughts on groups to reach out to, Meg? Well, I want to wonder if we want to hear talk about Erica and Dan's report first so that we're not, they're so related and they've done that work. I'm worried also at the time that we might not get through this agenda. Sure. We I, can, can, I can be very brief. Um, okay. give, us, about, give us a I'm, short report. I'm giving, I'm jumping to agenda item 10 for anyone who's following along. Um, so the question that came up in our last meeting about having a working group slash subcommittee on uh, generating ideas around public outreach, public input, feedback mechanisms, et cetera, um, we ended up in a, in a meeting with Dan and myself and Julian and Athena to discuss the possibilities and whether or not, and how that would work, whether or not that would violate in any way the open meeting law, the, the points that we were sort of clarifying and discussing earlier in this meeting. Um, and we arrived at some, some possibilities, um, I think, for doing individual sort of brainstorming and idea generating to then bring back to the group. But we hit upon, I think, please, you know, Correct me if I'm saying this wrong. We hit upon the same challenges that we were hitting on earlier when we were talking about uh, how to generate questions for um, a legal consultation or anything else that there's a issue with. If we meet outside, if Dan and I meet outside of this group, we have to consider it a, um, a subcommittee subject to all the same, uh, the same guidelines. Um, which we can do if this group feels that that's the way to go. Um, I'm not sure that that's the way to go. In addition, I just wanted to mention, Dan and I weren't able to move forward more and it's it's my my fault because I had a personal, uh, a personal family um, a tragedy that I had to travel for. And so I missed a, a bunch of days in the last week that I wasn't able to keep communicating on this subject. So we haven't moved that topic forward, but I just wanted to say as an agenda item, how do we want to handle brainstorming around public outreach? We're sort of back to where we were, which is do we want to um do we want to um delegate that out to one or more people? Um again to generate ideas to then bring back to a future meeting to discuss with the larger group. Excellent. Thanks for that report out. Um, Dan, does that seem good to you? Anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, I I think that we, my understanding of our discussion during the during Athena's open meeting presentation was that we can um, that we can each send ideas to one person and they can put together and that that's a, a way of actually drawing on everyone without a subcommittee and getting everyone's input, putting it in one place and then discussing it. So that, I mean, if, if I understood that correctly, that seems like the way to move forward. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, didn't, we, didn't, we weren't able to meet. I could certainly say what my ideas are, <laughs> what my, my individual brainstorm is, but maybe that's for another uh, another session but yeah as far as how to do it that seems to me that if that that can be without conflict with open meeting and get everyone's input that that's the way to go excellent um bernie yeah looking at the agenda and, and listening to eric and, and and dan it it seems to me that um we have outreach to subgroups we have topic states and locations for outreach events and then we have the the, the notions of uh, of brainstorming that um, Dan, he has, Erica, he has. 
it would make sense to to designate a person for us to send our 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 individual correspondence to have that person compile it sort it and then present it back to the uh, to the committee now whether that's you know Dan's nodding pretty enthusiastically so I'd, I'd nominate him uh <laughs> uh, uh you, you, you know or or, or Erica cuz <laughs> you, you guys had this idea to begin with so uh it doesn't matter to me who 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 does it but i think uh, those three topic areas for um for tonight are probably best served by us um doing some quiet contemplation committing them to an email and sending them to a person who can uh, who who can compile it all for and feed it back to the feed it back to the committee at our next meeting i think that's an excellent idea um erica Yes, thank you. That's what I was getting at. And um, just a clarifying question. When we're talking about doing this this brainstorming outside and and sending one person ideas, uh, are we, ta are, Athena, maybe this is for you. Are we talking about e emailing you and then you are forwarding to a person? Are we? Can we have a running document somewhere that lives somewhere to, so that people can sort of paste into? Um, it's, it's best if one person collects that information and then does the compiling and then we put the document into the next meeting packet. If it's updated in between meetings by that one person, then we would put the, the next version and the next meeting packet. I haven't shared folks email addresses with uh, you aside from Julian's because he said that I could at the first meeting. Um, so if somebody wants to volunteer to to do that compiling and is open to having their email address shared with the committee, um, then I will send it around and and uh, invite folks to respond to that person. And just to but, clarify, uh, this is about brainstorming for like ways we can do outreach. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Um, Meg, go right ahead. I I would love to have everybody's email, even just to write to one person and say, when you said that, what did you mean? We should all know that our emails are, uh, if there's a lawsuit, you know, we're liable to whoever we write. So, but I I would like to know everybody's email. Now that and we you, know the guidance, and your emails can be collected. Um, if there's a public records request, they can right. Someone can take your phone and find what your emails are just so right. folks but know. i don't i don't i'm not planning to write any yeah. emails that i would be embarrassed for anybody to see <laughs> <laughs> me neither um dan yeah i mean this connects with the, the this the subject a, a little down the agenda that i would like that also i um, mean of course if someone doesn't want to share it that's their right but i guess it feels like the this has been a bottleneck in our communication and, and really yeah, and Huge. I would like I'd like to, there to be enough trust that we have the the the, the discretion to to manage this um, because it is. I mean, the, the, I couldn't communicate with Erica, um, and it seems like and and already some of us have each other's emails, some don't. It, it seems like a thing that we should we should just be able to. Yeah. You know, I mean, exactly what Meg just said. It's like, oh, you said something like this. Could you send me a link to that? I didn't have a time to ask you in the committee. And we'll put the link in, in our archive on the website. It seems like right. exactly. there, shouldn't be, there shouldn't be stickiness around this. You know? I agree. It is somewhat cumbersome. Even I don't have everyone's individual emails. So it would be, it would be helpful to get that at some point. And and I will say openly, everyone can have mine. I'm I've uh, that's <laughs> me fine. too. That's fine with me. What is it? What is it? <laughs> oh, but, no, yeah. but hey, wait a minute. I, <laughs> maybe I have to think about. That. It's it's Dan Muscat Dan Muscat one at Gmail. That's um Athena. I'm going to ask everyone to. Um, folks might not feel comfortable, and we don't have all nine members here in this meeting to let me know in writing that. You would like your email shared. It might not be comfortable to say, I don't want my email email shared publicly in this open forum. Dan, you've just made your email address 
available to anybody who might see this meeting right now or watch the recording. And I, I, I feel very protective as a staff member of your privacy as regular folks and that you might not want everyone um, to have your email address and to be emailing you about this kind of stuff all the time. So um, it's not just open meeting law that I'm aware of, but also that you're your people and you, you might not want to hear from everybody. You might not want to get emails from uh, residents about this at your at your email address. So I'm just going to ask everybody to just send me an email saying, yeah, go ahead and share my email address and then I'll do that. And if not, then I won't. Excellent. Thank you so much, Athena. Dan, do you still have a question? No. Erica? Uh, just returning to the to the topic at hand, um, I'll just put my name forward. I will send Athena my email to then distribute to the group if uh, if anyone, unless anyone has any objection, I'm happy to be the person to compile, to collect everyone's input on this topic, which is ideas for methods on public comment, public outreach, and feedback. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so I guess we can send our ideas and brainstorming thoughts for outreach to Erica. Um, if we have a consensus for that, uh, I don't think we need to vote on it. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it, Erica. That's <laughs> and we'll help. Thank you, myself. Erica. Um, <laughs> excellent. So that covers number seven. It also pretty much covers nine and 10. So I'll move us to number eight, which is our relationship as a committee with the town council. Dan had me put this on the agenda. So if there's anything you want to speak to about it, Dan, feel free, go right ahead. I mean, I think a lot of the things have come up where it feels like, um, I mean, I've had a, a certain amount of frustration that, that, that this, uh, I mean, there are various limits that have come up, come up against. And it was a question I had early on, like, what is our, what is our independence from, from the council? And I, you know, and looking at other, like Watertown, their charter review committee is the town council. And so ours is very different, which is we're not nine non-employees. So I guess I put it on the agenda really because I feel like it's good to be clear about that. And also, um, yeah, I mean, out of frustration, and as I said, a number of these things have kind of been addressed in the course of this. Um, and I, but I also felt like I'm interested in hearing how other people see it too. Andy, yeah, I mean, I, I think you're you're right that that um, other places might have the council be the be be the committee, but in the, in Amherst's case, we chose to have it be a separate uh, uh, committee. And I guess the relationship is that anything that we propose that the council can change or recommend to the legislature or whatever, then they then we will be forwarding that to them to act on it one way or another. But um, I would hope that we would be, uh, you know, and I, from what I'm hearing from everybody, that they would be a a major constituent that that we would be talking to as far as collecting information about how things are working how things could be improved um, and that, you know, I, I would love to hear from, you know, current and former council members about what's working about the charter and what isn't and what their, what ideas they have for making it, you know, better. Um, so, but I think our, our charge is broader than just, you know, what, what the council wants. It, it's basically to send a report to the council to, to act on, uh, to the extent that that it's within their purview, um, but but then we'd be looking to collect information from a broad group of constituents, anybody with interest, and and then to make whatever recommendations we see as as right without uh, considering what what they think. I mean, we would take their input, obviously. But. Right, um, Ken to um, kind of echo what Andy said before I realized he was going to say it. Um, my understanding is that it's, it's, those, it's those two pieces, those two relationships, they're going to be our interviewees. We're going to get the information from them. 
in some ways I would treat them as an Amherst resident, but in other ways I would, you know, take obviously their very unique perspective and in, into account when they give their input. And I think before we had our first meeting, we had a, we had a council member that actually submitted information that we all have access to uh, opinions about something in particular. Um, and then that we would simply, it would be kind of a one, and I'm not sure if there's a conversation really with them at the end or even at the six month uh, report period or at the end report, final report period, we send our information there. I suppose they can come back and ask us for clarification, but I feel like it's like a one, more or less a one way uh, of information under them and they do with it what they hmm. what they can that's my understanding if it's more complex than that i would love to know that right now yeah i i completely agree ken um i think we're a distinctly separate and unique body from the town council we can make recommendations that they as a body will disagree with that they as a body will agree with um i think it's important that we collect our uh collect feedback from them like we would any other resident considering their perspective as counselors and former counselors <laughs> and that we send our report and clarify and discuss it with them as needed. Maybe we'll go to a meeting of theirs to discuss it and answer questions, but that's sort of pretty firmly how I feel our relationship with the council should be. May? And also the council are individuals, you know, they may have different opinions from each other So do we meet them all, you know, anyway, they're not of one mind necessarily. Excellent. Um, I guess I don't really know if a motion is necessary or helpful here, but um, I don't really see a need for one. We seem to have pretty decent consensus on that. Any other questions, comments? Nope, seeing none. Andy, I guess just I I just want to make sure I'm understanding what the concern was. What 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 was there a concern that the council would be uh, governing our our work in some way? Um, it was you know again it really I think a lot of it was about this administrative stuff and 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 maybe it's just working out kinks. <laughs> um, I mean the the comments you guys this uh, this is how I see it too in terms of what our who we're talking to, what the goals are. So no, it was more just about, I guess really my question came from frustration for uh, whatever procedural things that were, that seemed to be getting in the way and, and you know, are they necessary or, and, and that's really what was driving mm -hmm. it. As I said, a number of these things, we kind of got, got worked out in the course of our, our earlier conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I agree as far as, yeah, what, I mean, I personally am very interested in, in talking to, to, um, current and former counselors. I think this whole thing of what there's a law on paper and then there's a law when you have to actually work in it. And that second question is really interesting to me. Um, yeah. You know, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, this is just an aside. I found this really interesting report. It's about 20 years old, but it's about, um, it's about home rule in Massachusetts. It's kind of an overview and especially in the Eastern part of the state. So it's not completely clear, but it goes into all this detail about charter commission, uh, special act, the way that the laws was, was intended, the way it's actually worked out. So if anyone's, I mean, if you're interested, there's obviously you can go down a lot of rabbit holes with this stuff, but if people are interested, I thought it was, uh, it was a very much a, like, this is the way things actually are working as opposed to what the intention was when the Home Rule Act was passed in the mid 60s. So yeah, anyway, um, yeah, that's all. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think we have a pretty decent consensus. Um, last call for questions, comments? No, okay. Um, I'll move us along. Uh, the next point is since we did 10, 11, we sort of discussed, but not really, um, which is outreach and document review subcommittee. Um, we're sending all our feedback um, for outreach and brainstorming to Erica, but the question is, do we as a charter review committee want to have a subcommittee for outreach, a subcommittee to review documents, it, or even a subcommittee in general? Um, and if we do, we should vote to create that. And if we feel like 
sending um, the information to Erica is sufficient, um, then I think that is appropriate as well. Bernie? Yeah, I would agree that, you know, if you if, if people have uh, suggestions about subcommittees uh, to throw that into the mix and, and uh, uh, give Erica one more thing to do. Um, I, but I, I really don't know that we need to create subcommittees right now. And I really don't know that we can create subcommittees until we agree on how we're going to do outreach and who we're going to do outreach to. And uh, uh, so it's, it's one of these things that we need to be mindful of, but wait. Yeah, absolutely. Ken? I will close on those, Bernie. I, I think that that's something that will happen. I don't think we need to think about it at the moment. Okay. Sounds great. I would I would tend to agree. So moving on to number 12, um, election of officers. Uh, I will first take nominations for chair. If you'd like to nominate someone for chair, please raise your hand. Um, and then after we do chair, I'll take nominations for vice chair. Dan, go ahead. I'm going to nominate the current temporary chair. That's you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I accept your nomination and appreciate it. And um, will does that need a second, Athena? Or nope. Okay. Um, I'll take a roll call vote um, for well, nominating. Wait, we'll, wait. We'll, we'll wait there might it. be. Some Oh, <laughs> let, let, let me if there's not going to be another hand going up, I will Thank move. You. I will move that nominations be closed. Thank you. Wait, yes. Um, is there anyone else who wants to any, run? Anyone else who would yeah. like to run for chair? I should have taken that. If anybody else would like to run, please say so now. I don't see any. Any comments mm -hmm. regarding? No, I, I will. I will move that nominations be closed. Okay. I second it. Second that. Can, second. We, can we call that a, a motion to elect Julian as chair? Sure. Excellent. Thank you um, for helping me chair my chairing, Bernie. <laughs> um, <laughs> excellent. I'll, look, the, I'll send you the bill. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I'll check the mailbox. Um, Dan? I uh, Yes. Yeah. Um, I'll abstain. Uh, Erica? Yes. Andy? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Marcus? Yes. Ken? Yes. Meg? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, let the record show that I am now your permanent chair. If you have questions or feedback, you just got my email. Feel free to email me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will. Uh, that was a eight to zero vote with one absent. Um, and then I will move to you, Dan. You still have your hand up? Uh, I do. And uh, I just wanted to say that, you know, good job. And I and one thing I've been really thinking about, too, is not just that your 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 presence in the meeting of how great it is to see and here I am, a, a bald gray guy, to see young people stepping in. It's really yep. encouraging. It's really encouraging. So thank you for being willing to do this. Yep. Thank you, you so know. much, Dan. I appreciate it. Um, Andy, and then I'll take nominations for vice chair. Oh, I was going to make a nomination. Oh, excellent. Um, go ahead and make a nomination for vice chair. Nominations are open for vice chair. Andy, go ahead. Um, I, I'd like to nominate Erica. Oh, okay. Excellent. Um, Erica, do you accept the nomination? Yes. Excellent. Um, thank you very much, Andy. Other nominations for vice chair? Seeing that, I'll move, I'll move that uh, we make uh, Erica Mijin the vice chair. Excellent. I second that. Thank you, Bernie. Um, I will take a roll call vote in favor of appointing Erica as vice chair. Um, Andy Churchill. Aye. Yes. Um, myself. Aye. Erica? Abstain. Dan? Certainly. <laughs> Bernie? Who? Yes. Yes. Uh, Marcus? 
Yes. Ken? Yes? Um, May? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> thank you so much. Congrats, Erica. Um, I will look forward to working with you. And thank you, Andy, for your services, temporary vice chair. Um, excellent. So now, now that we have done that, I will move to our 13th agenda item, which is, do we as a committee have an interest in having a retreat? Um, we want to do that, not thoughts, questions, ideas, etc. I'll look for raise hands. I think that's Excellent. Um, Erica? I think it might be useful. Um, I think that if my, it feels a bit soon to start planning for it, but I think that it, it might come in really handy as a sort of uh, to have a long, a more prolonged period in which to work things out. Excellent. Um, Ken? I would, uh, yeah, I would also be supportive of it. And I guess the, the, the leading question, next leading question, which I don't want to devolve in a, in a, a very long conversation, but the, um, uh, you know, would that, what, 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 what would a retreat be? Would it be part social, part supercharged um, committee meeting? that gets a ton of stuff done in a short period of time or or what what exactly would that look like is it like as a charter review commission uh i think yes that it would be um that it would be sort of a supercharged like get to know each other and see if we can sort of knock out a bunch of stuff if there's a period in time where we divulge and look through the entire charter um that might be an appropriate time for a retreat, et cetera. Meg, and then Andy. Um, I agree. Uh, that we, it's a great idea. Sorry about the phone. I was on mute. No um, we never answer our landline. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I think it would be, I agree that it would be good to have it not right away so mm -hmm. that we have some time to think about what would be the best use and to have more clarity about what the questions are that we're pondering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh sometime maybe early january something like that because mm -hmm. social is a good thing to do i would really hope it could be in person i don't know if that's possible but that would be ideal to have be physically in the same place but i think something like uh soon enough so that there's time you know that we're not lollygagging but enough time to give some more thought to exactly focus on what we would be the best use of, of in-person discussion. Excellent. Um, Andy? Is a, uh, is a retreat still a public meeting, I assume? So we would still have to post it and people might show yep. up and watch us retreat. Yep. Um, yep. We, <laughs> we, might out, we might outlast them, but... Um, <laughs> okay, so it's, it's basically a long meeting um, to, give, to give us more time to both get to know each other and get things, you know, get, make some progress on things, right? Yes, and for members of the public, if you plan on attending, you get to watch us all sit back in our recliners and discuss things. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, excellent. So <laughs> I agree, I think it would be good to have a in-person retreat at some point, um, maybe in December or January, uh, where we sort of work on stuff and that I don't want to make a motion now. I don't feel like that's appropriate. Um, but I agree, a committee retreat would be great. Other questions, comments about that? No, seeing none. Um, number 14, before we adjourn, uh, future agenda topics. I'll just say that um, one thing to be aware of is that the website has been updated to have the League of Women Voters um, recommendations as well as how they got to their process and all of that type of stuff um, posted there. So you can find it in the same place where Councillor Haneke submitted her comments um, and look at those documents if anyone's curious. And then future agenda topics, I'm open for pretty much anything and I'll make a note of it and put in my next agenda. Just raise your hand. Erica, go right ahead. Thank you. In the interest of um, for like long runway for planning and moving things forward, 
I want to propose that we have on the agenda um, an initial readout of whatever the first round of brainstorming is on the subject of public comment, public outreach. So that would mean not only having it on the agenda, but setting an internal committee deadline of everybody sent, committing to send send me comments, ideas, et cetera, by a date uh, with, a, with like, let's say 48 hours so that I can um, put that together and have it ready for our discussion. That sound fair? Yeah, that sounds yeah. excellent. So if our, if our meeting is on the 7th, right? That's what we agreed on, we're on the 7th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can we say that um, emails are, are sent to me by the 5th? So not only do you have to vote, but you have to send me an email by November 5th. Good. That sounds excellent to me. Um, I'm just making a note of it. Athena, I'm sorry, an additional question there. Go ahead. That that um, document that I put together with everyone's feedback, um, if I, I'm assuming that's going to eventually land in the document center attached to our meeting, um, our committee documents. Um, is there a, is there a timeline where I need to get that to you? There's not a requirement that materials go in the packet prior to a meeting, but it's helpful for members to have that material in advance so they have a chance to look through it before the meeting begins. Um, so earlier is always better. I think uh, two days, if, if that suits the committee, then two days is a reasonable amount of time. Excellent. Thank you. Andy. Yeah, I was just um, going to say, I think so something similar that, you know, Eric, Erica, you may want to have time to look at it and put put it together in time for then you to send it to Athena to put it in our packet. So right. you want it a little sooner than the fifth? Yeah, that's why I asked. I, I guess I asked those things out of order. I should have asked Athena first. But um, if we could say the third. Okay. I, 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 would, third. I would give Excuse yourself me. a little I would give yourself a little more slack. <laughs> I would say the first. Um, people can, uh, or, or yeah, no, the third, I, yeah, I'm sorry. All right. That's, that's fine. I, I think it depends on how fast you, you intend to work. <laughs> I'll work very fast. If you guys send me, you know, like good input early, even better, but we'll say by the third, so I can do some cleanup and send it over to Athena. Excellent. Super. I think that is a great idea. Thank you, Thank you so much, Erica. Other agenda topics that will certainly be on our next agenda. Okay, I don't see any. Athena, go ahead. Um, I wanted to ask the committee and this can be, um, um, I guess, part of uh, what maybe I'll send the suggestion to Erica about um, a feedback form or something like that for the website and um, how the committee wants to organize its material on the website, it would be helpful for me to have some direction there. So um, mm. if, if you wanna include that as part of the conversation about the brainstorming and outreach, um, that would be great. Otherwise it would be helpful to have a separate agenda item so we can I can ask those questions. Um, yeah, uh, that sounds like an excellent idea. I will certainly put that as an, a separate agenda item to at least discuss, um, because I think that's a good idea to have a feedback form that we can circulate okay. and articulate. Um, Never mind. Meg? I think my question was answered. So for okay. topics for the next agenda we send to Athena and ideas for outreach we send to Erica. Yes. Okay. Um, agenda, excellent. Agenda topics to, to um, me and Julian is, is Great, so that okay. Julian's going to set the agenda, okay. and then I'm I'm just going to be, be a, okay. The, thank the you. Assistant. Thank. Yeah, I'm taking notes right now, so I I have most of it. But yes, send it to me. Thank you. And Athena, okay. you were asking for feedback on organizing materials in the document in the committee documents. Um, if the committee wants to collect feedback via an online form. 
Um, and if the committee wants to um, put some of its research together in, in a, a place on its webpage, something like that, how, how the committee wants to give me some direction on how you'd like to do that. Right now, I just put, I put the League of Women Voters documents and the, um, the letter from Councillor Haneke and the community feedback link. So um, it, it would be nice to just have a short discussion about how we'd like to organize those things. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank so you. are we also sending you um, our, email our email out to the rest of the commission? If you want. If you'd like, yes. Okay. okay. Excellent. Other, other comments, et cetera, for, or for things not anticipated or um, future agenda topics, et cetera? Seeing none, uh, I move. Meg, go ahead. I'm really impressed that we finished this agenda. When I looked at that, I never thought we would. So <laughs> good job, I, Julian. I agree. Everybody. I agree. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I hopefully like, nobody so felt so rushed. We'll but never, we'll never it is do 7, that. Nine, <laughs> and we have squeezed in 15 agenda points. So congratulations, everybody. Yeah, I, I mean, we yeah. should notice this was a massive agenda, and we did it. Great leadership, Julian. Yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Um, I try. Uh, all righty. Um, I'm going to move to adjourn. Can I have a second? Second. Excellent. Um, the motion's been made by Julian. But just for and the sake of the records, to say Erica seconded, because sometimes yeah. it's hard to hear. The motion's been made by, that's what I was about to say. To say the, to say the name, because in a re recorded meeting, a Zoom meeting, you have to say the name of who seconded it. Yes, uh, the motion's been made by Julian Hines and seconded by Erica Midgen. <laughs> Thank um, you. To adjourn. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, and uh, thank you. And I will, uh, I will start the vote. Uh, Meg, go ahead. Yes. Um, myself is a yes. Erica. Yes. Uh, Andy. Yes. Dan. Yep. Bernie. Yes. Ken. Marcus. Yeah. We are unanimously adjourned. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Good